You know, it's funny, man. It really is hilarious how I sit here every single day and I talk about professional wrestling. I got off the script every week and I cover Raw, I cover SmackDown, I cover NXT. And all the things that I see throughout the week, as far as criticism goes and people disagreeing with me on what I say, for whatever reason that you don't like me, This week was probably one of the more volatile weeks because of my opinion on Finn Balor receiving a mysterious, this is the best word for me to use, mysterious push out of nowhere. And I cited the reasons, not because WWE values Finn Balor as a performer, but this is WWE's way of counteracting against the announcement of All Elite Wrestling. Because Finn Balor is friends with everybody on that side of the fence. And WWE feels, well, now we have our shit being pushed in. We have all this talent that came from over there that knows those guys. So, let's try and do one better. Let's... Let's try and treat them a little bit better now in hopes that they may stay when their contracts are up. Hey, Cody, Matt, Nick, look, your friends are being treated good over here. There's no reason to keep an eye on their contract, man. That's exactly the mindset that WWE has right now. And if you don't understand that, I cannot sit here and save you. There's nothing that I could do and say that's going to make you believe. All I can say is that competition is real. Everybody now in WWE that is feeling disgruntled, that feels underutilized, misused, disrespected, if AEW gets up off the ground and gets a TV deal and WWE doesn't start treating their talent, the way that they need to be treated. At this point, it's too fucking late. At this point, a team like the Revival, guys like Balor, the Club, Zack Ryder, Tyler Breeze, Ty Dillinger, Mojo Rawley, everybody that's not being Apollo Crews, the Ascension, everybody that's not being used is going to really think long and hard about what their next career objective is going to be. Now, I'm not saying that All Elite Wrestling should sign everybody that's unhappy in WWE. I don't want it to look like a WWE reject fucking landfill, but it's a great time to be a professional wrestler. And when I read reports like today, it even proves more so that I'm right And everybody that wanted to say, oh, WWE doesn't care about AEW, motherfucker, yes they do. Absolutely, they care about AEW. Now, I don't give a fuck who watches this, I don't give a shit who listens to me, when you listen to me. Hey, uh, Triple H, Vince, WWE, I have sat here in my quote-unquote fucking basement staring into this same fucking camera for two years. Two years. I gave you gold on how to book tag team wrestling. But you want to make a fucking priority in this company when you got mountains and mountains and mountains of fucking other issues. You're worried about changing. Oh, they're no longer can be an Authors of Pain. We gotta change it to AOP. Oh no, Andrade Cien Almas is not what we're gonna call him from now on. We're simply gonna name him Andrade. As if the Cien Almas was bothering anybody. And with the backlash that I seen on social media on Wednesday morning, a lot of people uttered the same sentiments I did. What was the fucking difference? What you called him. You took away his identity. Andrade. Now he's like everybody else. It's bad enough you kept him in the back for about seven months doing absolutely nothing. 
Do you realize the talent that you have on this fucking roster? The one thing that pisses me off is to see talent wasted. Every day is a new day. Every day is the start of something that could be new. These people waste away in WWE in the back hoping for a fucking opportunity and then when they get it, it's still nothing. Nothing. Lifelong dreams, childhood dreams to come to WWE. They prove themselves to be the best fucking tag team in the world. And then when they hit Monday Night Raw where careers die, then they're asking for their release two years later. I ask why. I ask why the Revival wasn't a team that you took from NXT. Why did you deviate so far from what Triple H did? Now, I'm not going to sit here and stroke Triple H's fucking schlong, okay? But I I think Triple H's track record with everything that he's done as far as NXT goes is exactly what people want to see. I don't see people anticipating WWE Fastlane or WWE Battleground or Hell in a Cell every fucking month. Every time there's a TakeOver show, people want to see TakeOver. People want TakeOver. People want and anticipate TakeOver. Everything that the man has done has just been nothing short of brilliant. The talent that he has nurtured and cared for and created is the future. It is the future of this business. So why do these talents succeed in NXT and then just miraculously, out of nowhere, it's like they didn't even fucking exist? The Revival was a tag team that was tearing takeovers down to the fucking ground. Before Johnny Takeover was calling himself that, we had The Revival. They were tearing NXT up and down, showing you exactly what we've been missing all these years. A throwback to tag team wrestling, and they took what worked in the old school, applied it to the new school, and here we are looking at the revival. Scott Dawson and Dash Wilder as the best fucking tag team in the world today when they were in NXT. And then when they hit Monday Night Raw... All this thought of, well, I can't wait to see the Revival versus the Usos, and the Revival versus the New Day, and the Revival versus the Bar, and the Revival versus this one, and that one, and this one, and that one. Why is it that when they hit Monday Night Raw, they just completely became irrelevant? No, but WWE's priority at the time was nothing but Roman, 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 Roman. You booked your entire show around Roman. Where did that get you? Nowhere. And now tag team wrestling has every opportunity in the world to fucking thrive on these shows and you still refuse to embrace tag team wrestling. I ask why. I ask why. Then when the revival leaves and they go somewhere else, you're going to look like a bunch of fucking idiots. I hope that you do. And I hope that they make you regret every fucking decision that you've ever made. Because you deserve it. Vince McMahon and his fucking clown parade deserve everything that's coming to them. Everything. You deserve a mass exodus from the company. You deserve to look like a bunch of blithering fucking idiots with all the talent that leaves and goes on to find success somewhere else. And then what's going to happen? It's going to come full circle. WWE's going to look. They're going to get salty. They're going to see all these other talents succeeding. And then they're going to want them back. And that talent has every fucking right to tell you to go fuck yourself. What'd you do the first time? Why should I even trust you the second time? Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't think that there's competition right now brewing between the AEW brand that that probably doesn't even have a ring built yet and WWE, if you don't think there's competition, you are a fucking idiot. This is competition 101. 101. We're in a new era, right? Then why the fuck are we getting the Revival versus the Lucha House Party? Does anybody watch this fucking show? And, re- and then I still have people telling me this was a, a better show. 
Go fuck yourself. I don't want to hear a fucking single word from your mouth. Period. You are a blithering idiot, and I don't even want you around me because stupidity is contagious. Better? What the fuck was better about Monday Night Raw? The Revival versus the Lucha House Party again. How many times have we seen this in the last two months? Probably every single week. There's four weeks in a single calendar month. Guarantee you we've seen it six out of eight weeks. New era, right? What the fuck is a win over the Lucha House Party going to do for the Revival? Oh, well, they got to beat the Lucha House Party to get another shot at the Tag Team Championships. This is how this is how plebeian your fucking writers and creative are. What the fuck is the Lucha House Party doing in a tag team division, number one? You, you had the Lucha... You, what, you, what was that fucking tag team? The Lucha Dragons with Sin Cara and, and, and Kalisto, right? Where the fuck did that get them? Why'd you break them up if you're only going to give me the Lucha House Party in return? Like, I expect them to do anything on Monday Night Raw. And then you're putting them in a position where the Revival has to beat them to get a shot at Gable and Rude again? This is fucking mindless garbage. Mindless garbage. And then when I watch that, I criticize it. People tell me I'm too critical of the fucking product. I proceed to call you a fucking idiot. And then here I am reading today from Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com. Top guys, out. Revival asking for their release, reportedly. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's true. Because Sean Ross Sapp did not state that the Revival blatantly asked for their release. Now, it's being reported that they are frustrated and something happened in the backstage area before Monday Night Raw that caused the Revival to feel this certain way now. I don't blame them. I don't blame them. They probably looked at the fucking script and were both at the same time asking themselves, when is our contracts up? AEW looks like a damn good fucking option right now. They looked at the script and seen Lucha House Party again. This is what the Revival deserve? Really? And then WWE's gonna turn it around and, oh, we want you, oh, we appreciate you, blow me. Fucking shut the fuck up. They're doing it with Balor. They're doing it with Balor. Give me a break. Balor came up from NXT and he was the most badass looking motherfucker that WWE has seen in years. Everybody loved Finn Balor. This guy was a badass. Nobody said anything bad about him. He had the demon with him. Every fucking big major takeover, the demon was there. He had an identity. Comes to Monday Night Raw within the first month. All right, he beats Roman Reigns on his first Monday Night Raw episode. He's the first Universal Champion. He gets injured. WWE somehow within that span of eight months forgot who the fuck Finn Balor was. Vince McMahon's dementia probably uh, was sped up about a thousand he looks at Balor, what the fuck is this vanilla midget doing here? Who the fuck is this? And you get the Finn Balor that you see now. Crotch shots, leather jacket, colorful fucking t-shirts. Just complete nauseating garbage from this guy for two and a half years. And now you want me to fucking sit here and believe that Finn Balor miraculously, mysteriously is now going to be a top name on Monday Night Raw, literally out of the blue. Going up against Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship on Royal Rumble Sunday. And then people tell me, oh, J.D. Finn Balor had one of the most winningest percentages uh, on Monday Night Raw. Really? This is the statistic that you're coming to me with. Uh, wh what the fuck did you watch all year? Can you name one match that Finn Balor had in 2018 that you fucking remember as being, man, that was a match of the year outside the triple threat match? That he had with The Miz and Seth Rollins at WrestleMania? I can't. All I remember is matches with Jinder Mahal, mixed match challenge ma matches with fucking Bailey, Elias, Baron Corbin. Yeah, but this is the Finn Balor that uh, you, you think is uh, somehow getting pushed based on his value to WWE, right? If it was up to WWE, he'd still be feuding with fucking Baron Corbin. Guy didn't even have a fucking shot at the IC title. Now you want to believe that he's Universal Championship worthy. All because he beat Jinder Mahal in one night and then pinned John Cena. People, you gotta smarten up. You have to smarten up. Balor is being pushed because AEW is coming to town.
The Revival is being used on television because AEW is coming to town. Zack Ryder had Cody Rhodes tweet him. Zack Ryder was used on Monday Night Raw a week after that tweet because AEW is coming to town. Apollo Crews and his white fucking teeth are on Monday Night Raw more so than I ever remember seeing them. Why? AEW is coming to town. Ty Dillinger's even cryptically tweeting. Give me a break. Give me a break. You got Mike Kanellis and Maria Kanellis complaining that they're not being used even after being moved to 205 Live. You got too much talent. You don't know what the fuck to do with it. Give me a break. This company is in complete fucking disarray. And if you don't know what the fuck you're watching, I don't want you watching me because you're a blithering idiot. And I feel like a father schooling his fucking son. Son, you were in detention for fucking shooting spitballs at at the science teacher. And I'm going to school you and how things are done over here. I don't give a fuck if I come off too hard. This is the cold hard, the, the cold hard facts. This is the truth. Now, All Elite Wrestling. It's no secret that the Revival want to go to All Elite Wrestling. I mean, for fucking Christ's sake, they tweeted the Young Bucks. Remember this tweet. The Young Bucks versus the Revival will happen. And we will rejoice. The Young Bucks tweeted right back at them. Revival comes out wearing hashtag FTR on their tights. I wonder where they got that from. I don't know. I don't even know how the fuck that made television. Uh, th- th- this goes to show you that number one, people in WWE are fucking brain dead. Number two, Vince doesn't really give a shit about anything that's going on on the outside. Or he uh, he does give a shit. Let me rephrase that. He don't know what the fuck is going on because he's so stuck in his own goddamn bubble. Now, if he really knew what that meant, or he knew the origins origins of where that came from, you'd think he would have allowed that to be on television on their tights. Subliminal messages is what they're doing. Now, with all this talk today that the Revival asked for their release, what do you think WWE's doing right now? You think they're going to let the Revival walk? You think they're going to release them from their contracts? Of course not. Now, if the Revival were smart, they would walk out like Neville. They would walk out like Neville. And you know what? I, I typically would not even say that. I typically wouldn't even go that route because it's disrespectful. But the way that they've been treated after Triple H pretty much took care of them as if they were his own children. Match of the year candidates with DIY and Enzo and Cass, American Alpha, and everybody else that stepped foot in the fucking ring with them. How you could misuse these two guys that badly is absolutely mind-boggling. This is a cardinal sin, wrestling 101. And then I got to hear from the detractors. Oh, JD, the Revival have no charisma. The Revival are garbage, really? The Revival have brought every single tag team they've been in the ring with to their best matches. Has DIY had a better match since the Revival? Absolutely fucking not. Enzo and Cass? Absolutely not. American Alpha? Absolutely not. Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler is a fucking tag team when they were together. Give me a fucking break. What did the Revival do with the Usos in that fucking Survivor Series pre-show match that they had with all the tag teams? They were, they were the last two teams left. Look at what they did there. Just a taste of what the Revival could do with the Usos. Yet, people are saying that they're garbage. Name one fucking team in the WWE that is better than the Revival other than the Usos. You can't. You can't. And here we are talking about how they want to walk away from the WWE. A lifelong dream. Everybody's dream in the wrestling industry is to get the WWE. If they see what's going on now, that dream is going to fucking blow up into a dust cloud of smoke. Ridiculous. I don't want to hear about anything concerning the revival about no charisma. They don't need to have fucking charisma. Nobody in the WWE barely has any charisma. Give me a fucking break. No, you're the revival of no charisma, but you want to look at Bobby Lashley and tell me that he has fucking charisma. Give me a fucking... Bobby Lashley is struggling to have more charisma than this fucking empty cup of styrofoam of Dunkin' Donuts coffee. You fucking clown. The revival is right now in the best position that they could ever be in. 
ever be in. Because they could walk away, which I would not blame them whatsoever. Pull a fucking Neville, pull a CM Punk, goodbye. WWE deserves it after what they did to them. Oh, but JD, they have a they have a binding contract. Why would they disrespect? Disrespect? I don't want to hear nothing about disrespect. WWE's disrespected them for the last two years. They have every fucking right to walk out. If you're disgruntled, if you're upset, if you're fucking feeling mistreated, if you're feeling abused in the workplace, you leave. You leave. So, I would not recommend doing that on a normal basis, but in this case, I would not blame them whatsoever for doing that. Now, what happens now? What happens now? I could tell you what's going to happen now. WWE is going to get a wind of this. Guarantee you the Revival is going to be given the Raw Tag Team Championships at the Royal Rumble or whenever they fight Rude and Gable again as a truce. Please, please stay with us, almighty Revival. Don't go nowhere. We love you. It was all just a joke. So, Sean Ross Sapp, in the report that he put out on Fightful.com, he states that the Revival outwardly did not ask for their release, which is being widely reported by everybody. However, it does say that officials within WWE have reason to be very fearful that the Revival are done and are finishing up with the company. This is due to an, an incident that took place backstage between WWE officials and the Revival, according to his report. Like anything else, let's see how it plays out. I don't want to sound like a broken fucking record, and I swear to God, I know something's going to happen, something or, or, or something else, a thing or two, is going to happen in the next couple of months, where I'm going to have to fucking dig up the goddamn video that I did on the draft, and I'm going to have to dig it up, because I know for a simple fact that whatever I stated in that video, you're going to have fucking fat slobs, and you're going to have fucking irrelevance saying, get off your... <laughs> get off your high horse! Get off my high horse. Suck my dick, motherfucker. Get off my high horse. Been saying this for two fucking years now, and I have record to fucking prove it. Meanwhile, everybody else is following my lead said it two years ago with the WWE draft. As soon as this fucking brand split was instituted again. The best thing to do, not only for the women, but for the tag team division, is to have them either rotating on both shows, or put one brand on one show, and put the other brand on the other. That's exactly what I said. I'm telling you right now, and I even have it fucking laid out for you. I want to give you guys a glimpse of what WWE's tag team division could be, okay? Listen to this. WWE really wants to make good by the revival? Then listen to fucking what I have to say right now. Embrace tag team wrestling, okay? I don't know what the fuck you guys are doing, but look at what's going on in the landscape of, w of, uh, of wrestling, okay? That WWE is not following. I commentate for House of Glory. The best matches, every single event that we do, are tag team matches. And most of them include LAX, who I love. They right now may be the best tag team in the world today. And I can't wait to call their match with Pentagon and Phoenix in February. It's going to be a wet dream for me because I love tag team wrestling. Okay, I'm getting fucking chills just talking about it right now. Those, those four are going to absolutely fucking burn down the NYC Arena in Queens on February 9th. Now, if you guys watch what they did at Homecoming on Impact Wrestling, you guys already know what those four are capable of. But the landscape of tag team wrestling right now is just fucking on fire. I don't know how. This is why it boggles my mind. I don't understand how WWE, right under their fucking nose, has the Undisputed Era having matches of the year with literally everybody they're in the ring with, and WWE's tag team division is a fucking... God awful mess. Like, how is this enticing anybody to want to be moved up from NXT if you're a goddamn tag team? If I'm Undisputed Era, if I'm the Street Profits, if I'm Heavy Machinery, who's about to make their fucking debut, which is right right now falling flat on its fucking face. If I'm Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch, if I'm I, I don't know who else is down there. Who else? everybody? The War Raiders, Tino Sabatelli and Riddick Moss, whenever the fuck they come back. If I'm any of these teams, I am absolutely 
petrified that if I get called to the main roster, I am going to end up in a complete fucking mess. I, I don't understand why it it's beneficial for anybody to be in a tag team in NXT when their end result is only going to be death on the main roster. I, I mean... Look at this fucking list of tag teams that WWE has. I'm giving give you a list of current teams and teams that they should be utilizing. Listen to this. You got the Revival, a tag team that you should be building around. The Usos. I mean, the Usos are probably the second best tag team in the world today behind LAX. The Bar, the New Day. You got Heavy Machinery being brought up. The Club. You got Tyler Breeze and Fandango. The Ascension. AOP, or excuse me, Authors of Pain, for still reasons I don't know why you took Paul Ellering away from them when he went on record and saying, I love to travel, I don't know what happened. Then you want to stick them with Drake Maverick, and they have not even been seen on Monday Night Raw, which right now has got to be, what, three, four weeks? Where the fuck did they go? Another tag team that I'm sure is going to be asking for their fucking release, and Cody's going to be on the other end. Hey, hey bro, you want to come on over? Authors of Pain. Look at these other teams that they could... Look at the talent that they could be utilizing. If you don't have roles for them in a singles role, then utilize the fucking talents of these guys and start using them. It's like you're paying these guys to sit around and eat catering. Zack Ryder. What the fuck is Zack Ryder going to be doing in WWE? Nothing. The WWE have already deemed him worthless. Use him. Get the hype rolls back together. Zack Ryder and Mojo Rawley. Zack Ryder, that was a perfect role for him if you weren't going to use him. Mojo Rawley, what the fuck is he doing? What is Mojo Rawley? Why are you paying Mojo Rawley if you're not going to use him? Why? Get the hype rolls back together. Or better yet, what the fuck is Kurt Hawkins doing? What is Kurt Hawkins doing? He got this, this losing streak that's 220-something matches. Why don't you make a story out of it? Why don't you make a feel-good story out of it? Why don't you book something with Kurt Hawkins joining Zack Ryder, wanting to get the old band back together, and he can start winning some fucking matches as a goddamn tag team? Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins, that would be a nice throwback. Use them. Either one of them would work with Zack Ryder. Chad Gable? Jason Jordan, I'm hearing, is very close to being cleared from what Meltzer is reporting. It's just something with his hand that he can't really grip. All that well. That's what Jason. That's what Jason Jordan's going through right now. And that's what Dave Meltzer recently reported. If Jason Jordan is cleared to come back, get Bobby Roode back to the NXT version that we've seen a couple of years back. Get him into a fucking prick-like heel role and put Jason Jordan and Chad Gable back together. Get American Alpha back together. Simple. Shelton Benjamin. What are you doing with this guy on SmackDown Live? And why did we see him... Attack Mustafa Ali out of nowhere with no logical explanation to follow up with that? I, I don't understand that. Shelton Benjamin is a guy that's 40 years old that you merely signed so that he wouldn't go somewhere else and put on top quality performances. Here we go with Shelton Benjamin coming back into the WWE, signing with the WWE, and then having to immediately go get surgery. He comes back, he's welcome back on SmackDown Live, and has done nothing at all on this show. So what do you do with Shelton Benjamin? You don't have any fucking plans for Shelton Benjamin in a singles role. Why don't you get a version of the world's greatest tag team back together? Shelton Benjamin and Apollo Crews. They could feed off one another. Apollo Crews, you want to call him the fucking human highlight reel. Shelton Benjamin can still go and still outperform half of the fucking people on this roster. Get them in a tag team. You ain't doing anything with a fucking Apollo Crews. Nobody's going to believe Apollo Crews after sitting out two fucking years after he was called up from NXT out of nowhere, wasted away. The guy's a fucking loser in everybody's eyes. Get him with somebody like Shelton Benjamin and give me a world's greatest tag team type feel with those guys. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. Do I even need to explain to you how good these two could be in a tag team? Then those guys could actually do single shit as well. Sami Zayn actually tweeted out on social media, that he loved what Andrade Cien Almas did with Rey Mysterio, and he said, man, I can't wait to get back to TV and work with either one of those two guys. They could be two guys that could lead a division with the Revival. Now, what you should do here, I'm not saying get all these teams back together, Ryder and Hawkins, Raleigh, Gable, Jordan, Benjamin Cruz, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, but Jesus, fuck, Sanity's another one. 
Sanity is another one. I mean, what the fuck? You got Killian Dane, who is fucking monstrous. Eric Young, who still could provide top quality performances in a tag team role. Alexander Wolf. They make a nice trio. Why aren't these guys being used? Why were they called up? I'm telling you right now, you merge both divisions. The women's division is going to end up being merged, and I'm going to sit here and tell you, or tell you, I told you so. Tag team division needs to be fucking merged. You got three hours of Monday Night Raw that for the foreseeable future is not going away. Instead of giving me fucking backstage segments with Alexa Bliss standing there topless, instead of giving me segments like a moment of bliss, instead of giving me six woman tags with the, with the fucking riot squad and some mixture of Bailey and two other irrelevant fucking idiots, why don't you give me fucking tag team wrestling? You mean to tell me that's the best you got for a three hour fucking show? Rooting Gable versus the fucking Revival. The Revival versus the Lucha House Party. Every fucking week. Get a competitive tag team division back on these shows. Start caring for the fucking talent that is not being utilized. And get them out there in front of a live audience. And start using these guys and having some kickback on your investment. I don't understand this logic. Tag team wrestling is a dying art. In WWE, I don't know who the fuck would want to come into this company as a tag team and look at the landscape right now and think this is a good business decision. NXT, maybe, but after that, you ain't going to stay in NXT forever. You're eventually going to get called up to the main roster, and then what's going to happen then? What is going to happen then? So, the Revival wants to walk out, which I hope that they do. Or the Revival get their release from WWE, which I don't think they're willingly going to do because WWE knows where the fuck they're going to go and who they're going to call first. That'll, that'll be the next sign. The next signee for AEW. As soon as that 90-day no-compete is up, boom, there you go. They'll be ready for May. They'll be ready for double or nothing. But if the Revival walk away, folks, I hope that WWE regrets everything that these guys have done. You don't think they've built up enough social media presence? You don't think they've built up enough awareness about what the fuck's going on to a point where it's not going to be a really big deal in w or, or in professional wrestling with what they did in WWE? Look at this. The Revival, if they leave WWE, look at the caliber of fucking matches that is awaiting them. Gorillas of Destiny, LAX, OVE, Omega and Ibushi, the Young Bucks, the Briscoes, Pentagon and Phoenix, the Lucha Bros. You don't think the Revival won in on that? You don't think AEW is going to bring in Pentagon and Phoenix for the Revival if they go over there? You don't think the Young Bucks and the Revival are going to fucking tear the house down? I, I'd buy that fucking pay-per-view, whatever event that is, I'd fucking buy that pay-per-view simply for that match alone. I just don't get it. I, I really don't understand it. This is a fucking crying shame. It, 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 a disgrace. A disgrace. I swear to God. I'm telling you exactly what needs to be done, and it hasn't been done yet. The Revival is asking for their release reportedly. Sean Ross Sapp says top guys could be out because of a backstage incident. I guarantee you, you start seeing WWE start sucking up to the, to the Revival. It's too little too late. It's too little too late. Well, because AEW now is in the rearview mirror, that doesn't mean you can start treating your talent the right way. They should have been treated with the utmost respect coming up from NXT right out of the gate. Where's the respect for the Revival? Where the fuck is the respect for NXT? Everybody that you wasted coming up from there. I'm not saying everybody from NXT needs to be a top-tier fucking talent, but Jesus fucking Christ, when you got gold, when Triple H is handing you a fucking gift-wrapped present, nicely fucking tightly wrapped with a big red bow on top, ready to go. And guys like The Revival, and we see that they're wasted away? What do you think that's going to do? I don't know what else to tell you, people. I, I really don't. I, I, I genuinely hope they walk away. I want nothing but the best for Scott Dawson and Dash Wilder. I really do. You know, I, I, I get animated. I, I fucking throw the F word around a lot. I know. I know. But, man, do I hate seeing talent wasted. I, I, I could not wait to sit here and cover this shit. 
I wish them the best of luck in whatever they do. And, and fuck WWE, man. You know, I'm a WWE guy. I'm a WWE lifer. I'm going to be teaching my kids about WWE. But I'm also going to be teaching my kids about how WWE is operated. And I'm going to teach my kids how WWE should be doing things. Just like I do with each and every one of you every week. What they did with the Revival or what they're doing with the Revival is ridiculous. Monday Night Raw could benefit from seeing the Usos, the Bar, the New Day, Heavy Machinery, the Club, and all these other fucking tag teams, all these other talents that you're not really utilizing. Get them on TV. Get them in roles. Use them. Be creative. I don't know. I'm getting the fuck out of here, man. Absolutely ridiculous. I, I don't have anything else to say.